What's up, guys? Welcome to a very special interview. This is the first Skype VC kind of call we're doing here. Right now, we have the legendary Master Bates. What's up? Hey, what's, what's up, guys? What's going on, buddy? <laughs> so, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. How about you? Doing, 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 doing pretty well. good. So, After all, um, right, yeah. So tell us about uh, your career here in, um, in Critical Ops. You can go back as far as you want, um, pre-Critical <sighs> Ops, or you can go all the way into... Um, to up to now well uh, okay so how do I begin but I can hear myself all of a sudden I don't know why hmm? anyway, I'll just if there's, if there's no uh, issue on your end I'll just continue um, where did it start for me sort of back in September 2015 so uh I was still playing MC5, and I was just, I hated the game. I was looking for something else. And there was, at that time, there was nothing on the, on the mobile market as far as uh, proper FPS uh, titles. Mm -hmm. So um, I started, I just kept looking on the internet for alternative um, FPS games than MC5. And um, eventually I, I found this... Um, Android's beta testing page for this game called Critical Ops. And I looked at a few videos from the CFE itself. They're looking for promising games, so I said, like, I'm just gonna apply for the beta testing program. And uh, that's where it all started. I mean, I fell in love with the game as soon as I started playing it. And I just stuck with it ever since. That's basically how it went. I mean, didn't really play competitively at first. Um, but you know, there were a few, there were a few um, teams, and they decided to host tournaments. And I was like, okay, I'm decent at the game, so I just played this first tournament. Um, but at the time, I was still playing in NA team because there was like barely any decent EU players, and I played it in NA team for the longest time. Uh, this team called DVS. I don't know if you're like any OG members who still remember that name, um, but that's a team that I started with. Um, and yeah, eventually I decided, like, I, I don't really like playing um, in an NA team. First of all, I hate playing on bad thing or people with bad thing. So I was like, I'm ju I just got to move on and search for an, uh, an EU team. Someone with the same thing and, you know, same time zones is also quite useful. So what got you into uh, shooting your own YouTube videos for the game, too? Ah, oh, what got me there? Basically, I started, um, I found this game and I played the game. And basically, the same day, I just recorded some gameplay, and then I uploaded that gameplay on a YouTube channel with no subscribers whatsoever. Um, and that's, that's how I just started doing YouTube, just recording small bits of gameplay, uploading it to YouTube, no editing whatsoever, no thumbnails, no, no maybe a little bit of music in the background, but that's it, just very raw gameplay. Yeah. And eventually... Yeah, eventually I started adding some uh, some music and doing a little bit of editing. Started editing on my phone as well. Who did your intro? Uh, my intro, I uh, had myself. Everything, nice. I did everything myself. Nice. I, I've had a few yeah. intros before, it's definitely like uh, the previous one. I don't know if you remember the previous one. I don't know if you've seen the previous one. But basically, it was straight up ear rape. That's yeah, that was it. Uh, people didn't like that one, so uh, I was. Uh, I was trying to switch it up, then. Eh? <laughs> I was. I was kind of forced to make a new one. It was like half the people loved it, the other half hated it completely. I like and then that I, we did. Yeah, this one that I have not right now. There's barely anyone who hates it. I mean, it's something original and just something simple. It's kind of funny, I think. Yeah, and it, it shows you shows your personality, you know. So <laughs> kind of yeah. Goofy, that yeah, I really like this one. Yeah, and um, you're at uh, 10k followers or subs now, so that's amazing. Right now, 10k, it happened so quickly. Like it was just a few months awesome. ago, I barely hit 1k, and then it just took off completely. Took off. Do you think that had to do something to do with uh, your competitive scene career, perhaps, or just the fact that you kept <sighs> uploading videos? I think the biggest boost. I got was because of, well, first of all, uh, the people that I collaborate with. So I've done quite some videos with Rooks and Dr. Hand, uh, Ill Shots, 
Those are all the big YouTubers in this yeah. community. And we've known each other like since the beginning. We've stuck with each other since the beginning. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've always hated how they just started growing so quickly and I was left behind. Oh. <laughs> I'm, oh, <yeah>. I'm, still, <laughs> I'm still kind of behind them, but I'm slowly catching up. So uh, yeah, we help each other grow. That's, that's what Rooks did with, uh, with his 60 subscriber giveaway and his Gleam. He helped us grow as well still. That's awesome. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, he was really looking out for us. I think that's, that's good for this community, community too. Yeah, yeah. That's people help like, each other out. Exactly. And um, CFE is doing the same. I got a big boost from CFE for um, rewarding me in their game as well. Yeah, you went and to that Finland also as well. A huge boost. Yeah, yeah, I've gotten there twice, I think. And now you guys are there, right? No, no. We're, 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 I'd like to go, but that'd be that'd be cool. We're gonna actually meet I think them. Eventually, yeah, eventually you'll get there. We'll, we'll try. We'll try. In the beginning, it's gonna yeah. get a quick boost. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. um, so tell us more about the competitive scene. So you, you left the NA, and now you're looking for teams in EU. Um, what was the first team, competitive team, that you either started or played on that kind of really geared you towards, like, all right, this is the big game? Uh, but, yeah, DVS, Jesus Christ. Yeah, okay, and, uh, um, the first, yeah, the first actual team that I played tournaments with was, as I said, DDS. That's the first team that I actually played a tournament with. Um, then I moved on to uh, Dome Shot, which is like a semi NA, semi EU. We eventually changed our name to Novus Ventus, or also called Novi. That's a team that I've stuck with for a long time. But then. Uh, yeah, we had a lot of good members, and they were looking for better teams, and eventually we split up. Like, Lewis um, is now in GS, in Gangstars. So he used to be in our team. Uh, we got some players who just left the community, like Silent and Jaira and Ruffy. Um, and then I, that was, yeah, still like semi and semi-U. And then I decided to go for the full EU team. And eventually I got hit up by Tico to join um, Viral, or was Mia, I think. No, I think it was Mia. Mia hit me up to join Viral. Um, and I joined that team. Really seemed like a proper team to play with. And I started playing tournaments with them, and we really did well. Even though we didn't really have like strats or anything, just mainly gun skill and, and, and game sense, basically. And that's basically this the team that I've stuck with since then. Um, some changes happened, like a few players left, a few players joined. The, the corporate team is still the same, and the name has changed like several times. But that's basically it. Do you guys so who's your favorite like team right now? Yeah. Favorite team right now? Outside of my team? Yeah. Um, the new teams that have come up so far. Who's your favorite right now? From the new teams, huh? Well, it depends on how long the new teams last. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I've, I've liked um, the Kings team because they've stuck with each other for a long time, and I I get along with most of the members, so yeah, I really I Kings have a lot of sympathy for their team. Um, from the NA teams, same with Gangstars, they've stuck with each other for a long time. Mm -hmm. Really like that team. Yes, um, been your team, of course, Heat or Insidious. Um, they were doing really good. Um, I've played against your team once. Or twice, I think. Uh, you have a really proper lineup. The only oh, you. downside is that a lot of players are really young, so for uh, land tournaments, it's going to be an issue. But I really like your clan as well. So, yeah, yeah, those are like the main clans. I think um, I think you right. mentioned Kings and Gangstars, which is a big, big thing for me. Because when I came in, I'm a new gen, super, super new gen. Um, uh -huh. it, was, it was Hammers, Team Phoenix, which were all derivatives yeah. from Kings. Yeah, it was basically Kings. Yeah, yeah. so... Mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting to see the teams that are now, because Gangstars, GS used to be the bottom, and now they're at the top. So, mm -hmm. um, and then they I still put... struggled for a while, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, people forget yeah. that. So I, I've, I no, still I've put known. the EU side up there. Everyone, everyone sleeps on the EU side still, um, especially people from the NA side. Um, I don't. And uh, there's also um, South American teams and Asian teams that are also really good as well. Mm -hmm. But they just don't have the limelight as much, you know. So that's why I like about Valiance because it gives those other teams opportunities to kind of, like, breach that gap. Um, that's true. But, um, the only, I, I like what Valiance is doing. The only thing that I kind of dislike in a way is if you want to have NA teams play against EU teams or South Asia teams, for example, 
there's really not a way to do it fair online because there's always going to be that big difference and that's the biggest issue in online tournaments the major difference in pay yeah um but if this keeps growing and eventually they do lands then it's going to be perfectly fine and you can see basically if NA is really better than EU, as they always claim. I've um, never made those claims. I've never made those <laughs> yeah. claims. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people claim. And I, and I used to say that as well, that the NA scene is better than the EU scene. But lately I've, see, I've seen like a lot of EU teams really you know, show up and really show what they're worth. And I think we're almost at the same level now. Well, if you look at ESL, take ESL for example. Look at how many mm -hmm. teams signed up for the EU side compared to the NA side. There was way more, way more teams. There's more teams, yeah, but I don't know if that means that there's no, better yeah. teams. That's true. But, but yeah, I think I think the game is bigger in the EU than NA. Mm -hmm. Um, I think. I think the EU side is it still has like their top teams, just like the NA side has their top teams. Yeah, every, every that's, that's always going to be like that. There's always going to be like the few main big teams, and then the other ones trying to get there. Um, but I've, I'm happy with the way it is now because I, as you said yourself, you remember the Team Phoenix and Hammers, and they were the only teams. Um, back in the early beginning, it was basically only one team, Kings. Kings. Um, and then. ESL, um, I mean, the tournament hosters and CFE and the community, they made some changes, really did a good thing for the community, for everyone. So they changed that. Um, EU and NA can't play in the same tournaments. You have to play in your own region, which did a lot. And the other thing they did was you can only have one team playing per organization. And since then, you see a lot more like team showing up and there's more diversity. Yeah. And I really like what they do. I think it makes it more competitive that way, too. Exactly. Because, mm -hmm. like, right now it's, okay, IMP is going to win a tournament, uh, Insidious is going to win a tournament, uh, Gangstars is going to win a tournament, instead of always Steve Phoenix or Hammers or, or just Kings. They're still the same teams, but... Yeah. Switch, so but it's, it's more... It's better for fans, though, too. Exactly. Watch the tournaments. Yeah. It gives, gives uh, teams a chance to build up their brand as well. So. Mm-hmm. And the more teams that play in organization uh, in, in tournaments and do well, the more attention I guess from like for example organizations and bigger stuff. organizations ex exactly. So let's let's talk about um, the LAN event that was uh, supposed to be, then wasn't, and now it was, and then now it's online. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Well, my it's 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 a bummer. You know, I've re I've been really looking forward to the LAN tournament. I really wanted to go. Um, but I understand that there's things that happen that CFE and ESL can't do anything about. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I just hope that one day they'll be able to host their own event instead of being a part of a bigger event so they have mm -hmm. the say in it. Because right now they just they couldn't say anything about you know the fact that it's not going to continue anymore. Yeah, to me it seemed then, yeah. like they tried to like... Uh, piggyback with another event is what I'm kind of thinking. I could be wrong. Um, that might be the case, but then again, I think at that time, at this time, this is the only way since the, the scene isn't as big as to be able to host your own big events. So for a start, I think it was necessary to be a big event running, a bigger yeah. event. I think, I think you're though, you're right, though. If, go ahead, Tyler. Um, my bad. I was just going to say, what are your thoughts on the new tournaments popping up, too? The new ones? Um, of Vinyl, I've always been a fan of Valiant's tournaments. Um, I think they're doing a really good job. Um, they're really original with the, the tournaments that they come up with. They are really well organized, which is the thing that I really like. And in my opinion, I think Valiant's is the most, like, at the moment, the best tournament organized out there. Oh, yeah. Uh, what do you think about the new uh, ICOF that is coming out? Tournament. Oh, yeah, they asked me to, to lead my own Belgian team. I thought you're the captain of the Belgian <laughs> yeah. team, I thought. Yeah, I was, I was gonna, I was gonna, you know, play in it, but they gave us a very short time to make a team. And to be honest, Belgium is a small country. There's not many people living in this country. And I don't think many people in my country play this game. So it was a hard time finding a proper team that was going to be able to compete. So I just gave up eventually finding a team. 
Uh, but I might still play the, um, the Netherlands team if they need a player. Since we're a neighboring country that speaks the same language, I mean, if that's possible, I'd say yes. I, w I don't see why not. Plus, I'm, I'm sure they want um, uh, influencing players to be a part of the tournament. That's kind of like the whole idea, Probably. you know. Um, so I think yeah. I think you brought up a good point, though. Like, uh, going back to the LAN, if, if that really decides who's better... And I think in the future, like, I, I would love Valiants to put on their own land. I think they would do a great job. And exactly. I think exactly. I would travel oh, yeah. to Europe. Because when I grew up watching esports, all the tournaments were in Europe anyways. There was not many mm -hmm. in North America at all. So, like, it was just guaranteed you were going to Europe, you are going to Poland, you are going to, to Asia. Not not coming to L.A. for tournaments. So, I wouldn't mind. I don't think this team is perfect for a World, World Series, series, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, the thing is... Um, I, I I really wish that Valiance was in charge of the land tournament as well, because in my opinion, it's going to be a statement that ESL doesn't like to hear, but I don't think that ESL is um, organized enough to be hosting an, a land tournament. I mean, I don't I've think played they several were ESL invested enough into it. Like the the staff they had were invested enough into it. That that's my opinion. I don't know what it exactly the issue is, but I've I know from experience and from hearing a lot of other competitive players that ESL lacks in organization and, and following their own rules and stuff. That's why I prefer Valiance over ESL way more because I think that Valiance is doing a way better job even though they're a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but yeah. you know, because well, sometimes it's, it's their game too. too. Yeah. yeah. And they have a lot more investment into it. I can't hear you because we're going to Can you repeat it, sir? Oh, my bad. You said, uh, repeat the question, Tyler? Yeah, please. <laughs> oh, I was just saying because <laughs> they're so well invested into it, too. I think it yeah. would be a better tournament. Yeah, because, uh, Valiant started their whole, their whole brand based on Sea Ops. So, mm -hmm. But, um, exactly. I, um, what do you think about in the next year for the competitive scene? Uh, with all the hacking that's that's going on right now and all the, the suspect vids being dropped and stuff, do you think there is a proper solution or do you think the competitive scene is going to gonna fade? Do you think it's going to be fine? Um, what are your opinions on that? Um, well, hackers are always going to be in a game. You can't get rid of hackers. They'll always find a way to hack your game. Um, I think it's up to CFE to keep improving their anti-cheat and anti-hack and auto-ban system and stuff. Um, about the whole exposing videos, I understand in a way why they're doing it. Um, uh, how do I say this? Um, I've done the same. When I play a scream and I see something suspicious, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share it on Twitter just to offer opinions what other people think. I'm not going to go around saying he's a hacker 100%. I'm just yeah. going to post it. We're not even going to upload a video on it on YouTube because it's unnecessary because it gets way more traffic as well. I think on Twitter is just fine asking for the, the people because most of the people who follow me are also people from the pro scene. So they know in a way what I'm talking about. So that's why I ask for opinions on, on Twitter and not on YouTube. Um, also, for example, if I'm if I'm wrong, they're gonna get less hate uh, because only a few people see the video that I post. Mm -hmm. um, but I think there's nothing wrong with if you see something suspicious, just upload it, ask for opinions. I think there's nothing wrong with that. If you're wrong, apologize. If you're right, you did a good deed. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So, so do you think? think my Go ahead, Tyler. Oh, my bad. Um, so do you think if CFE did instant replays, that would help out too? Oh, definitely. Like definitely. And stuff? If there's a way to, like, um, just showing the opponent's, like, um, screen, mm -hmm. yeah. in a way. Um, by instant replays, I'm assuming you mean, like, um, kill camps? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Or, like, top players um, of the game, too. Mm -hmm. Just to inspect players. Yeah, that will, the, way, that really help, yeah. the way that you spec the players. I don't, know, too. I don't know how easy, easy that's going to be to implement in a mobile game. Yeah. That's yeah. the thing. It's a lot of data. 
might be a little bit later down the line too. Exactly. I've seen in the roadmap that they're going to add like a post-death recap. Um, I think this is also going to help a lot. For example, it's probably going to show like how many times they hit you and how many damage you did and how many damage you did to them. That's going to shots, help. How many shots fired and stuff. Yeah. If someone said 98% really cool. of their yeah, shots, like... Then I'm not sure if that's what, the, what, what it's going to show, show, but from, from both, uh, uh, post that re recap, I think, I think that's, that's going to be it. Just speculation. So if I'm wrong, don't shoot me, okay? I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so do you think you'll still be playing this game in a year from now? Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, if, uh, if I can keep this team, um, I mean, we keep playing and the game keeps growing, then most definitely, yeah. I mean, it's the only mobile game that I've actually played for longer than two months. I've, I've tried a few mobile games, but they never really, you know, grabbed my full attention on my film uh, liking. But yeah, I'll probably play this game for a long time. If they keep... I mean, it's, it's awesome. You can take it anywhere. Exactly. That's why I think mobile gaming is the future. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to grow really big. Mm -hmm. and I agree. People forget that this game isn't completely developed yet. Exactly. I've said, I've, I've said that a lot of times, like... A year ago, in my opinion, they released the the beta way too soon, because the game the game was good. The game was good as a standalone version, and people yeah. treat it as a finished game. They don't yeah, realize exactly. the, that it's a uh, unfinished game, and that's why there's a lot of like hate on the game. Oh my god, like this is uh, bugged out, and this is bugged out, and there's so many hackers, and this and this and that. And I understand I think where they're coming from, but. Like you said, people don't understand the game is not finished yet. It's, it's got a long way to go. It's amazing for a mobile game, though, that they already have a rank match. Exactly. Yeah. People wanted ranks so like, bad, and then they got it, and then they hated it. And they, they pushed it because people kept asking for it, and there were books, and of course, people started bashing on it. But that's what they asked for. They asked them to push ranked, and they pushed it, and of course, it's full of books. I'd rather wait a little bit longer on a on a proper update that have them push it and have it being full of books. So do you yeah. think that uh, the tournament should be kind of cancelled for now then, or do you think people should still be able to proceed with the tournaments? <sighs> I think they should proceed with the tournaments, but when it comes down to like um, summer finals and like quarter finals maybe still, um, they should have everyone record their screen mm -hmm. at least. I, I agree with that, too, especially since most people that are going to get to the semifinals, finals, are the quote-unquote pros, and mm -hmm. they record their stuff all the time and upload <laughs> stuff, So they, they and they should have the pro devices anyway, so um, exactly. I think that, um, that is a must. That is a must. And there's a lot of people who are going to be like, oh, but I don't have a PC, and I can't record, and I'm on iOS, and it's going to be difficult. But I think iOS is dropping... A new update soon that allows you to screen the yes. So then there's not going to be any excuses anymore. So nope. no if that drops, then there shouldn't be any issues. And I think everyone should record their screen during um, quarterfinals, semifinals, and finals yeah. just to make sure. Yeah, because I yeah. mean, and that's fine if the tournaments take a little longer because you just want to make sure that you aren't getting, getting cheated out. I, pre I prefer them to take like a few days instead of cramping everything in one day because, yeah. like, Yes, finalize it, make, it, make sure everything went through good. Sunday. Yeah, like, yes, I have on Sunday, and everything needed to be streamed from summer finals up or quarter finals up. But sometimes that got dragged until, like, uh, 1 a.m. on Sundays, and I'm like, I gotta wake up in three hours, I'm not gonna stay awake for much longer. So I'd rather have these big organizations, uh, tournaments, I mean, take longer than one day, if possible, for the whole tournament. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um... So you've obviously been around the game for a while. Um, you have good friends with uh, the influencers in the community. Do you have any suggestions uh -huh. for other people trying to put out content and to, to kind of get to where you are? Um, first of all, just start uploading. Um, don't you know feel down when it's not going fast, when it's you know in a dip. Um, just keep uploading. Eventually, get there. I started off just uploading videos of the videos, like nothing too special, just uploading, uploading, uploading. At first it went really slow for me as well, 
I mean, I saw Rooks and Ilchos going to 10K, 20K, 30K, and I was still at, like, what, less than 1K? And, of course, it gets you down, but just keep going, keep going, keep uploading, and eventually you'll get the result. I mean, all of a sudden, I had 1K, and then a month later, I had, like, what, 3K, and now I'm at 10K, and everything happened so fast. So uh, another tip that I give you is, don't promote your channel in other people's comment section or like Discord, because that's it's it's really disrespectful in my opinion. And when I see comments like that, I just delete them from my channel. Just again, have patience, keep uploading, have patience, and eventually you'll get there. If people, if you if you upload proper content, yeah. And then what you have about, any suggestions uh, for software? And, yeah, oh, my bad. Yeah, no, that was that was what I was gonna ask. For software. Well, to start with, yeah, 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 I started on a, on a regular Android device, you know, just the screen recorder from the App Store, um, just recording the gameplay and, and an Android editing program, and that's it. Mm-hmm. And when I had a little bit of money and I felt like, okay, I'm just, this is not the way to edit, I want to edit properly, then I, you know, got my laptop and downloaded Sony Vegas and I started editing on Sony Vegas. Um, again, that's just, that's the thing that takes time. I still know barely anything of that program, but it's it's better to eventually edit on a PC software than a mobile software. But a recording, I I've been using Elgato for a while now. It's a bit wonky sometimes, but I feel like it's if you want to grow in YouTube, it's the way to go. Just Elgato, it's really helpful. Is the editing on the go? Hmm? What did you say? Oh, you can edit pretty easy on the go with that, right? On Algarve? Yeah. I don't use the Algarve for editing. I no, just use it for recording. Uh, yeah, it's my capture device. device. Oh, but oh I, I thought you could edit now, with it too. I just use everything on my PC for recording to editing and stuff. Oh, okay. And I think that's what people should eventually do. Start off on your on everything on mobile. Start off that way because it's cheap and everyone has a mobile device, Correct. and it's a good way to start off. But eventually, if you want to keep growing, I suggest moving on to a PC software. Uh, my next question is um, for teams that are like mid tier to bottom tier. Now you've been with your teammates probably for a while now, and you guys have your mm-hmm. chemistry. Um, what is some tips to get over the hump of like that? oh, we just took a big L in a tournament and it's time to disband and form another team. Because uh, in the last four months, you've kind of seen a lot of that going on. Mm-hmm. Teams form and disband. What what kind of tips do you, can you give for other teams that kind of just keep that gel together and just kind of work it out and prove themselves that maybe they do have something special? I think that's just up to the person itself. I think it's uh, character, having character. Because in my team... Uh, Oh, this, it's, it's everywhere. everywhere. You lose some and you're going to be like, oh, I'll just join a better team if, if it's possible. But you just have to have that mindset of eventually, if we keep practicing, we'll get at that same level. And again, that's the thing that takes time and you'll have, you need to have patience. And a lot of people don't have that. But I mean, in my team, we've, we've taken some miles and, and we've lost a couple of, you know, tournaments and we lost some big matches like there i think there was this violence tournament and we lost like what 33 against kings or something and it was a big l and a lot of people would probably disband and after that just like be mad at each other but we just laughed it off and just decided to continue mm-hmm. and that's the mindset that people need to have like be serious about tournaments but don't let it go too far true. it's still a game after all you need to have fun that's true that's true um any other advice you'd want to give to other players to get to your level as far as uh, play-wise? Like, do you pra- How often do you practice a day? Uh, me, myself, I don't even practice that often. Um, I mean, uh, I'm pretty busy with, like, um, keeping my house clean or attempting to keep it clean. I'm not too good at it. Um, but I have my job. I have my YouTube that I still try to maintain. Um I, I, I try to at least play one or two, like, scrims mm-hmm. on each day, if that's possible, and just, like, um, play a few pubs every day. That's what I do, but I 
advise you, if, the, if you have the time, um, play as often as possible. Um, if you if you have issues with aim, don't play diffuse matches. Play as many TDM matches as you can. Just keep playing TDM after TDM. I barely play any diffuse matches. I only play diffuse and scrims and tournament matches. That's it. Um, so what's your favorite gun to use right now? <laughs> as of now? I've got yeah. three favorites, so I got my, of course, the Eurasio. I mean, I'd like to oh, yeah, believe nice. that I'm a decent sniper. Um, I've seen those like flicks. The camera, <laughs> yeah, I might be like Angel 2.0. Uh, no. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Angel's a really good sniper, and I like to be there at one point in time. But as of now, I'm not there yet. But I'm a decent sniper, so of course, the Eurasio. Um, MR96 is also a weapon that I really like to use. Um, I like to get those one taps. And of course, the AK. Those are the three oh, yeah. main weapons that I use. Ah, no one gives any love to any of the other guns. Hey, you know, I actually really <laughs> like the MP7 lately. <sighs> but the thing is, with that one. Um, a lot of SMGs are underused in like, well, TDMs basically because they're weak and diffuse matches because there's. Not much. There's really not that uh, I think much of a deal to MP5 buy it. I think MP5 or MP7 is perfect for like Legacy or Plaza. Because I love the close quarters, yeah. Yeah. But then again, exactly. it would have been used more if it, if they changed how SMGs work. Because as of now, it's just people buy it to save a little bit of money, and that's it. We don't you see a bot, a bot in like what the second round or maybe the third round, but that's it. People don't buy it often. I'm probably the only one that buys that one. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably. Oh yeah, but and I'd like to see SMGs being used more in like um, competitive matches. Well, I believe uh, yeah. that's why the mobile esports is doing the anti assault tournament. Exactly. And that's what I like about mobile esports. They really change. Uh, a lot of things and have really original um, tournaments, and I really like that. Yeah, it's, it's definitely nice to see something fresh. Um, so, tell us about uh, how do you feel about orgs coming into this scene? Do you feel like there will be bigger orgs that will come in eventually? Um, not saying like next month or two months from now, but like after the game's released, do you see like maybe an SK coming in, a Fnatic, an Optics, teams like that that would, would gravitate towards a first person shooter because they're kind of built on those mm -hmm. well of course i think that's not even that far away anymore um i mean a lot of these big orgs started you know virtuing adventuring and the mobile esports scene like if you look at vainglory a lot of like these big organizations like cloud9 tsm um, misfits a lot of these big organizations already jumped onto mobile esports and the way that this game is going, the way it's growing, I think it's not going to be that far away anymore. It's just a matter um, of I mean, just, as of now, a lot of smaller orcs are jumping on it. Um, back in the day, it was Steve Phoenix and Hammers. But back then, I felt like it was too soon for the organizations to jump in the game. But I think right now, it's a good time for organizations to slowly start, you know, venturing their way into the game. I agree. I agree because it, it not only helps the teams, but it helps the game as well. Because then it helps the game as well. Yeah. Yeah. It brings a it brings that big exposure um, for land events as well. Um, mm -hmm. So, and it just brings more clout to the game. So I think I exactly. think the future is really bright for this game, and I I really Tyler and I dedicate a lot of our time to this game. Well, obviously not playing as much anymore, but um, we really think this is going to be a big special game. So mm -hmm. we. Uh, we love I've, I've, I've said this from the start. I mean, yeah, I started playing this game, and I was like, this this is going to change uh, the mobile esports scene. Oh, yeah. I agree. And I've felt it since the beginning, and I've never changed my my thought about it. The same since two years ago, basically. Yeah. Well, this game is so well put together for mobile games. Exactly. Oh, yeah. And, and the developers are really, like, close to the community. Like, they do a lot with the community and for the community, and that's what I like about this, uh, this game. I agree. They listen to everyone's thoughts and opinions. Mm -hmm. and and people, some people are like, oh, they don't listen to us, but just because they don't implement what you're specifically asking for doesn't mean they're not listening. It's still yeah. their and they still decide what's best. And they do listen to your feedback, um, but it's still their game. 
and yeah. after all, they decide. And things take time. That's something that people don't understand as well. Because mm-hmm. they ask for something and they expect it to be there like what well, the next week. But yeah, a lot exactly. of developing things take a lot of time, and a lot of people don't understand that. Mm-hmm. So again, it's a lot of hard work to develop. Yeah. Game. So my, I'm I'm probably saying this like way too much in this interview, but have patience. That's all I can say to everyone. No, I would agree because I mean, you've been in way longer than we have, and I've seen how fast it's grown. So mm-hmm. I can't even imagine what point um, one and beyond is going to be like, you know, so yeah. it's going to yeah. be great. Again, yeah. it, it is, is growing fast because I didn't expect, like, like two years ago, I wouldn't have said that, oh, in two years, this will have, like, big tournaments with thousands of dollars of prize pools with organizations dropping on the game and stuff. I would have thought it would have taken, like, what, three to five years, maybe, but it started really fast, and I think it's going the right way. That's pretty much all I have, unless you want to do some shout-outs to some of your homies that helped you get to where you are. Uh, oh, of or, course. Or, or, or uh, if it's just all about you, then that's fine, too. I've got one now, more question. I want to do a few shout-outs shout outs after, after the question, question, yeah. If you don't mind, how'd you get your name? Ah, oh, that's a good question. <laughs> yeah. I've got that question so many times. Well, now it's time um, for you to lay for it that. down. I've never heard it. So. I've, I've told a few stories about it, and I've, you know, came up with a few stories, but I'll just be honest this one time. Um, um, I got this name at the end of my MC5 days. So, um, and MC5 was so easily to change your name. It, it didn't take any credits or anything. Um... And I decided to just, you know, fuck it out. I don't know if I'm allowed to curse. No, that's fine. Oh, yeah, you're it's good. Fine. So, um, yeah, I decided to just fuck it out and come up with a funny name. And I was like, okay, Master Debates, that sounds pretty funny. And I started using that name in MC5 as a joke. And people were like, oh, I like that name. That's funny as fuck and stuff. Um, and eventually, when I moved on to c I was like, I mean, I kind of like this name. I'm going to keep it. Um, and I kept it. And eventually... I became a moderator, and I was like, okay, I can't really keep this name as a moderator. It kind of doesn't make sense when I go to someone and say, like, hey, your name is inappropriate. I'm going to have to flag it, and I got a reply. Like, your name is like, okay, fuck, you got a point. So um, eventually, I changed it to uh, Mr. Bass, what it is right now. Still basically the same name, but it's kind of more appropriate a little more professional kind of a little bit more professional yeah <laughs> just a little bit but i'm still the same yeah, nice. you know big kids basically yeah, everybody knows who mr Bates is <laughs> everyone knows what that means well maybe not everybody <laughs> i think i you know build a, a nice little uh you definitely have the right to use that name. Uh, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I can imagine yeah. the kids being like, Mom, the masturbator banned me. <laughs> Mom, the masturbator banned me. I don't use that language in my Exactly. No, but yeah, I changed it for a brother. I don't like this name the way it is. That's not. So, uh, yeah. Right on, that's, awesome. that's basically the story behind my name. Right on. All right. Um, yeah. Time, time for the shout-outs. Time for the shout-outs. So, uh, first of all, shout-out to Lala for not being picked. Um, I'm assuming you'll do the interview with him, like, soon. Um, then I want to do a quick shout-out to the people who've always been with me since the beginning of this game, which are basically the squad members. So, uh, Rooks, Nini, MLG, Dr. Hans, uh, Illshots, basically those people. Um, and then the people from my current team. So um, as of now, we're called Team Valor. That's going to change soon. We got some pretty uh, exciting news coming. Um, but I want to give a good shout out to the people in the clan. So uh, Brimza, Zangatsu, Tico, um, Exo, G2, Overload, Fizzy, and just making sure that I didn't forget anyone. Yeah, don't forget anyone. Um, like, I'll start like yeah. Oh, I was going to say, what about Nugs? <laughs> Basically, <laughs> I don't want to play it. He's a streamer for him. That's why. <laughs> no, but yeah, a quick shout out to Daryl Nuggets. Right on, yeah, and that's, that's basically yeah. Shout out to Lala because oh, nice. he was the other one yeah. that we were trying to see to, to interview, but uh, Bates got it. So hopefully we can do him next time. 
But until then, thank you, thank you so much for being on the show with us and going through all yeah, the, the, the trouble, trouble, uh, troubleshooting that we had to do. Yeah, people don't understand. Probably struggles a lot. We struggled a lot. So I'm just, just hoping that it turned out well, because yeah. you know. Uh, we'll do our um, best, man. We'll do our best. So, but uh, yeah. thank you very much, and peace. Thank you. Thank you. Before, I want to apologize for the background noise because oh, no, my brother was really loud, so just oh, good. Uh, <laughs> peace out.